You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. We are here once again, and just like any other day, maybe we have another episode lined up for y'all. We're going to be talking to amazing artist, Lainey Dion, and she has some recent music that we'll be discussing today. She's not just a songwriter and cover artist. Man, she's doing big things in the indie pop world. So first and foremost, I just want to welcome you to the show. Say, how are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing awesome. So. Just give us a little backdrop of you. Where are you from and how did you get started into the music industry? Yeah, so I'm an indie pop artist from Rhode Island, small estate, shout out. Um, I started, I would say I started professionally after I graduated Berklee College of Music. Um, I started working with a label in Nashville um, with artist development. Um, and I mean, it's been such a crazy ride. Um, Our goal was to release three singles, which we did, um, all in the indie pop genre. I was a folk artist before, so it was very new for me. Um, And then we released the album and it's been it's been really crazy. I mean, I've gotten I almost sold one song to Selena Gomez, which was really cool. A couple of songs on the album have won major competitions like um, Unsigned Only international songwriting competition the new england music awards like it's it's getting out there which is a lot of fun how did you first get started in the industry and when was the moment when you say you know what this is something i actually want to do yeah so i played a show at my high school and it was a cover song (laughs) and the whole crowd started singing along with me and it was that moment that i knew that i wanted to perform for the rest of my life um I started writing songs at a really young age. Uh, I think I was like 11 or 12. And the first song I ever wrote was on an airplane. And um, which annoyed the guy next to me, I can only assume. Um, And uh, I like, I wrote a lot about love and that's still true today. I mean, you know, all the songs are about either heartbreak or somebody that you're interested in or whatever's going on in your life with another person. Pretty much every pop song out there is about that. Um, but when I was younger, I wrote very cliche, <laughs> like cheetah girl pop Disney music. Um, and then it branched off into this folk realm when I got into Berkeley, um, more like Ingrid Michaelson. Um, and that whole album, it was called Can't Refuse, it was an EP, um, was 100% written by me. Um, and that got me in the door to some record label interviews and um, A&R stuff. Um, and through that, I got my team in Nashville um, and we switched over to indie pop real quick. And they were like, your voice will be perfect for that. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm down. I love this music. Um and I mean, it just took off. Like I got to write with so many cool writers. Um, my first single is called Hey London. And that was written with Gabe Simon, who was written for Dua Lipa. Uh, I wrote songs with Jess Cates, Ethan Hulse, uh, a lot of big writers in the industry right now um, that write a lot of the songs that you've heard on the radio. So it was really cool to be able to get involved with that with my latest album, which is called Self-Titled. And once again, talking to Lainey Dion. And... You say you have a team and that's that's typical for people who are serious in it in this industry because it's not easy to do everything yourself. Explain to the audience uh, who's part of your team and what are some of the roles that they play in helping you get these projects out there. Yeah, so I have a whole bunch of different teams at this point, <laughs> um, but uh, there's this team in Nashville that I've been working with. They, they set me up with all of the co-writers that I have on the album. Um, And then there's a team in L.A. called B Squared Management, um, and they're really great. They've been getting me all my press, um, all of my playlisting campaigns right now. Like they've been doing a lot for me behind the scenes. Um, And then I have a sync agency. I'm actually almost going to get two right now. Uh, One of them is called North Star Media, and they try to get my music into TV and film. Right now I'm being lined up to have one of my songs called Skin in Teen Mom on MTV, which is really cool. Nice. Um, 
Thanks. And uh, another one's called Indie Well, which I'm going to ink in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, the more people that you can get that believe in you and support your career, want to help you out, the better. Um, it's just amazing to have so many people believe in me and want to get involved in my music. See, I can just hear the confidence and that's impressive. Did you always have that clarity as far as your personal goals in the music industry or was that something that you had to find a mentor for to help guide you? So I've always been very driven uh, and ambitious. That's just like a part of my personality. Um, I couldn't afford to go to Berklee College of Music. Um, so I only was able to go for two years. And I did that by taking 22 credits a semester with no breaks going through summer. And it was insane. Um, but I've always been really driven. Um, so confident in myself, yes. But confident in my singing, no. The first cover that I ever posted on YouTube, I did it in the dark because I didn't want people to see me. <laughs> so, uh, I, I totally wasn't as confident in my voice um, growing up at all. Like I didn't do solos in choir. I didn't even do choir until my senior year. So I wasn't always confident in my abilities, but confident in myself and like what I can do. I always knew that I, if I put my mind to anything, I could do it. It's funny you, you mentioned the YouTube singing in the dark. Cause I was going to say, you could have just uploaded a still picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't that advanced at the time. I think I was like a sophomore in high school and I was like, I'm just going to record this, not turn on the lights and uh, post it. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the time I was very emo. <laughs> I dressed very goth. Um, so being in the dark wasn't anything new to me, which is funny because there's a song on the album called Kick It in the Shadows, which is all about that. Um, but yeah, playing in the dark was something I always used to do. <laughs> <laughs> and one of your first releases was back in 2016. I know I am going back, but I want people to understand the, the sequence of your projects. So you had a project back in 2016, Can't Refuse. What was that project like? And give us a little backdrop story on that process. So that's the folk EP that I did. Uh, that one was completely done by me. Uh, without any teams, nobody interested in me, nothing. Um, so it was very DIY, did not know what I was doing in the industry, super green. Um, I wrote all the songs myself about all the relationships I was in. But one of the songs is about Berkeley and almost not graduating because they were threatening to take away some of my transfer credits. Because um, I ended up going to three colleges at the same time in order to be able to graduate. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but I mean... That EP is is kind of, it's got a soft spot in my heart. Um, all the songs, like I said, completely written by me. My, all my friends produced it. Like we produced it in apartments in Boston. Like none of that's studio. All of that's people's closets, people's bedrooms. Uh, it, it's, it was such an experience at the time because I did not know any lingo. Like I was, I was, I had just graduated Berkeley. I was just trying to get whatever I could get done. Um, and it was really cool because after I got the EP done, I sent it off to people in New York, people in Canada, people everywhere. And I ended up getting a meeting with Atlantic, Atlantic Records um, who turned me down. But getting the meeting was really cool. So, I mean, I'd say if you're a new artist out there, just get going, you know, D don't. Us as artists, we always try to tell us that this isn't good enough. You know, we always have that little voice in our head that like, uh, I don't know, but, you, know <laughs> right. you got to start somewhere. And I didn't know that my starting point was going to get me in the door. So, you know, get going. <laughs> now, I have to say, that's not a bad deal that on your first official commercial release, you had a meeting with a no name brand. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> let's speed up a little bit to I love you to death. I saw the artwork. I was like, oh, man, this looked like it could be intense. But then I was like, huh, this is interesting. So tell us that story of the sounds that you were trying to aim for in this project. Yeah. So I Love You to Death is the single off my album, self-titled. Uh, the album was released on September. Uh, it was released on August 31st. But I Love You to Death is the last song on the album. It's the third single off the album as well. That song is about, I mean, the... The inspiration behind that song's production and like the whole vibe of it was Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. I don't know if you could like tell that there's like a little 
little influence there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that song's about having your blinders on to a toxic relationship and you're loving somebody so much that you can't see how bad they are for you. Um, So technically you're loving them to death. Like (laughs) throughout the song, there's different references um, about how he's killing you and you just can't, you don't see, you just love him. He's killing you. He's he's doing all this stuff in the song and you're just like, I love you. It's cool. And uh, the, the bridge is till death do us part. So you're just like totally blinded. Don't see that this dude's like totally murdering you. Um, And I feel like that happens a lot in toxic relationships that you just don't see that the guy is bad for you or the girl. And um, yeah, so the artwork for that song, a little creepy, but I like it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It was done by Ghost XD. um, And it's a picture of me and I'm holding my neck because um, part of the song is talking about strangling and stuff. And the, this, the song isn't as, as creepy as <laughs> now. Um, it's actually a really lighthearted, funny song. Um, but So I'm holding my neck, but out of my mouth is coming flowers. So I want it to be like I'm, I'm choking, like I'm dying, but I'm choking on love, flowers representing the love. So the album artwork is really cool, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I, I saw the album uh, or that single art cover i was like oh that's that's very creative because yeah yeah that's a that's a very intense like deep thought type song so it's <laughs> it, like you said it is it has that that lighthearted vibe but it's it's a serious message um it definitely sounds happy but it definitely is a very- <laughs> <laughs> is it true that artists have a few favorite songs on the album or all of them are the favorite songs on the album how does that work i mean my (laughs) my favorite songs change from day to day um sometimes i like when i first got the mixes back i played them in my car so much listening for like okay well i want the eq to be different here i want this different sound here i want a new element here i want this so like i listen to them literally like 500 million times in my car so some of them that needed more work than others those get on my nerves a little bit listening to <laughs> so then i won't listen to them for like a couple weeks and then i'll go back to listening to them and be like oh this song's bomb um but i'd say ones that I could listen to and not get sick of probably damned and kick it in the shadows and maybe wake up call. Those three are, might be like top of my Spotify right now, which is like shameless, like <laughs> playing my own music. Um, but yeah, I love those songs. They're, they're really great to drive. Uh, to. You can plug the music for the rest of the show, man. Like I have no yeah. problem doing that at all. Uh, you had 12 uh, tracks on this project. And on the album cover is you, it's on flowers, it's on, uh, yeah, flowers. I think I saw some butterflies. So what was the concept that you were trying to go for with the art design for the album? Yeah, so no one's asked me this question before, and I've always wanted to talk about it. So the album artwork, I'm kind of sitting there. I got my my hand on my cheek, and I kind of look like bored, like I'm fed up, um, because I'm just fed up of all these boys that I've been dating. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's got like a scrapbook vibe. Like there's a lot of torn pieces of paper in the background, a lot of text that really says nothing. Um, and the text like uh, it's in another language and I don't even know if it like actually says anything, but it represents like how you're always waiting for somebody or guys always, not guys, your significant other <laughs> might always just tell you whatever you want to hear. And it actually doesn't mean anything to them. Um, and all the ripped paper is signifying how like pretty much my relationships have torn my heart and myself like to pieces, but I glued them all back together and now they're in this nice little album artwork. Um, and then I got butterflies to represent flight because a lot of the songs are about traveling, um, to different countries to, to meet some of the boyfriends that I had. Um, and then what else is on the cover on the back cover? There's a phone for wake up call my song. There's an airplane as well to represent flight. The flowers are for I love you to death. So, I mean, the album artwork, if you look at all the little stuff that's in the scrapbooky vibe, they all represent one of the songs, um, which is really fun. And then when you buy my CD, the physical copy, the front, um, I look bored and fed up, right? When the CD comes out, it's a picture of me and I look super happy and I'm like kicking my foot up in the air um, and my name's on it. So self-titled, usually when somebody says something self-titled, that means it's yourself, like it's your name. But I didn't want to give 
all the songs are about my exes. So I didn't want to give them my name. Like they don't define me. Um, but they, after going through everything that I went through with all of them, I felt entitled to myself again. Um, so that's why it's called self-titled. But when you take out the CD that's inside of the jacket, my name is there and I look happy again. So I think that's really cool. I tried to put as much thought as I could into all of my merch and, and all the designs of, of the CDs and stuff. I mean, if you're doing 22 credit hours, I can't help but think that you're like, just that's the norm. I mean, it's, I'm sure you probably had a ton of coffee. And <laughs> do you like Starbucks? I don't drink coffee. Oh, what? Yeah. I was going to say, we should get you like a gift card to Starbucks for your next project. So that way you can. <laughs> but all jokes aside, though, once again, we are talking to Lainey Dion and you have the opportunity. You mentioned throughout the interview, the people you work with. So you have all these different personalities, all these different perspectives and creative minds. How do you organize how you want to move in the industry as far as being strategic with your goals? Yeah. So obviously there's people that I would dream to write with, but it's, it's just amazing to be able to write with the people that I have written with and the people I'm going to write with in the future. Um, obviously like a big one that I'd be like, Oh, I'd love to write with like Billie Eilish or Halsey. <laughs> obviously that'd be like huge, you know? Um, but being able to write with songwriters that have written for those artists is incredible. Um, when it comes to the industry, like how I take it strategically, it's like a game of chess. <laughs> you always got to guess what the company that you're working for or label or not working for, but working with the label publishing agency, whatever, whatever it is. Um, you always got to think of, okay, well, if they ask me to do this, what's going to be my response? Is that the best response? What if I said this? What if they said that? You know, you always got to think and be prepared of what the next step is going to be. Um, in my experience, you can never be more prepared. <laughs> um, cause if somebody asks you to like play, you, you need to play on the spot. You need to know what you're going to do. If somebody asks you, Oh, well, who are you? What do you, you need to have an elevator pitch immediately that captivates people. Um, so like, I feel like strategically, I just always play it like chess. Like I always think of what are the different options and how can I respond to those options and how are they going to respond to those options? Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I take the industry. <laughs> I mean, that sounds very smart that you will have basically a plan in a nutshell. You're planning to what they will say. Uh, if you don't plan to be successful, you're basically like planning to fail. So it's either like Henry Ford, you, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, then you're right. You won't. So when you have that mindset though, that this is music is my baby. This is what I'm doing for the world to see and to connect to me. What are some of the messages or feelings you want the listener to basically connect to when you're putting out all your work? So I think it depends song to song. So I wrote a song called Skin um, and it's about depression and borderline having like suicidal thoughts um, over a toxic relationship that you just don't feel like yourself anymore you've kind of lost your way you you don't know why you're in this relationship at the same time you don't feel like you can get out of it um so I've had people reach out to me and be like that song saved me like that song saved my life like I can't believe that someone else has felt this way and like you've put into song exactly how I feel um so I've had a couple people reach out to me about that and that's amazing um I think when it comes to the sadder songs, I want people to feel connected, to feel heard, to feel like they're not alone. Um, when it comes to the happy songs, yeah, I want to be the jam that you play in the background at your parties or wherever you're at, you know? So I, I feel like it depends song to song how I want people to feel. Um, at the end of the day, I just want people to feel something. Um, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfectly well said once again talking to Lainey Dion and her project her music her life story you want to go get self-titled and check that out and also her previous releases what are some of your short-term goals for the future like if you can spill a little bit of the tea but not a lot 
what are some of the things you have planning in the near future of what you want to accomplish? Yeah. So I am already working on a second album, um, which is incredible. Um, with some of the writers that I've, I've written with on self-titled, um, one of my short-term goals, I guess, would to be to get more songs off self-titled into sync, um, getting on another sync agency, I think is going to help me do that. Um, the more the merrier, you know, um, I would love to do a tour for this album, but unfortunately with the pandemic, that's kind of impossible. Uh, but I will be doing live streams, um, radio, my songs have been on a lot of national stations, um, some international, which has been cool. I'm going to keep pushing that. Um, so far, it's been on pu- uh, 41 publications online. So I'm going to try to get more of that, too. Oh, you know, that's the- it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the more, the merrier, you know, that's that's the motto. Um, but Spotify playlists is definitely one of the things I'm also striving for. So if anybody wants to add me to your playlist, that would be awesome. Uh, stream the album. You can find everything on LainyDion.com. I'm on every single social media outlet out there, as well as every single streaming service. So, yeah. Well, once again, we're talking to Lainey Dion. You can go to her website, LainyDion.com, just like she said. And I <laughs> uh, just want to say thanks for taking time. Uh, your busy schedule talking to I am Refocus Radio today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.